I think the hardest part of slow living is actually just getting started. It's finding the time that's not perfect, by the way, to just do it. And especially me being a mom, it felt impossible. It felt like I have kids who are constantly needing me and they are not slow. They don't want to go at a slow pace. And what I didn't realize was that slow living was going to be the medicine for our family. It was literally going to change the dynamic and the connection and how I parented, how I felt as a parent, how I felt as just a human being. But going back to those days of just looking at this from afar, kind of window shopping, adding things to my Pinterest board, watching videos just like these and admiring this beautiful way of life. And I just wish someone told me that my body was actually just in freeze. You know, you hear of fight, flight, and freeze, you know, everybody's heard of those. And and for me, I was stuck in freeze and no wonder I couldn't get motivated. No wonder I couldn't get started. And so I want you to know that if you are somebody who's like, slow living looks so, you know, attractive. Like I had anxiety. So this calm, enjoyable life was alluring and it excited me. And yet I couldn't get myself to do it because of all the perfection that I had built up around it. And so I hope that this video today encourages you. I hope it gives you what you are needing to actually get started and to stick with it, knowing that your body is in some kind of distress and it does need the calm. But how do you do that when you feel stuck and like you can't just do it? My definition of slow living is quite simple. It's you. It's about what you love and what makes you alive and feel so joyful. It's about doing more of the things that add value to your life. It's choosing connection and intention over productivity. And while it does force us to slow down, it's through finding ourselves that we can truly embrace slow living. So I want to forget aesthetic. I want to lean into what is beautiful to you. It's the things that instantly bring warmth to your heart, a smile to your face that we need to find more time and room for. If you are new here, I want to welcome you to this little corner of mine. My name is Alexis. I am a stay-at-home mama to two little girls, and I'm also a certified parenting coach. I am so passionate about helping families to reconnect, to parent with empathy and compassion, and to truly break cycles to become the parent that they've always wanted to be and so if you love that kind of content if you're like yes this is the life I want to live I think that we could be really good friends <laughs> so hit that subscribe button let's get into today's video before I began still living I kept putting off actually doing it I waited for the perfect weekend of nothing so I could disconnect and fully embody the experience. Gosh, I had watched so many YouTube videos and started the most beautiful Pinterest board because I was so excited to start living this way. But this only filled my heart with anger and jealousy as I peered into people's slow lives. I then blamed my kids and my husband, his job, our family, money. It felt like a slow and intentional life just wasn't meant for us. And I absolutely hated that. So my husband and I did something crazy. We bought an RV and decided to travel with our 10 month old daughter. <laughs> I thought this would force us to be slow, but apparently it's not that simple. When I think back to the beginning of my journey, like I had mentioned uh, earlier, was that I was stuck in fight, flight, freeze, one of the three, um, at one point or another. I felt like I was constantly rotating through those things. And looking back, I just, I wish someone told me that was what the problem was. It wasn't that I couldn't start slow living. It wasn't that I was bad at it, or it wasn't meant for me, or I was too high strung of a person. 
it really was that I was I was stuck and it was so incredibly foreign to my body to slow down, to feel slow, to enjoy relaxing, to find this time for me. And I really believe that productivity was the answer to my life. I thought the more productive I could be, you know, then I could slow down. And I look at things much differently now. You know, now it's more of a let my life be at a slower pace because when my focus is let life be slower and then all of this comes, it's like everything just falls into place. I have more time to have random conversation with my husband and connect. I have more time and more availability within my body to actually be there for my kids and to handle their tantrums and their you know, little hiccups the way I actually want to. And so I think that it's key to remember that slow living is not like you just sit at home and relax all day long. Like that's not what it is, especially being a parent. It's more like these little pockets of time, these little moments that we get to carve out and we get to make slower so that way it bleeds into the rest of our day and then we can be there for the people who really need us when they need us. And we have that capacity, we have that availability to be there for them both emotionally and physically. So the very first thing that I'm gonna recommend anybody does if they wanna start slow living is set aside time. And don't make this time like the whole morning or an entire weekend, because that's what I kept doing. I kept waiting for this perfect, beautiful window of opportunity, which typically was like a very long weekend. My husband would have off from work and we could all slowly wake up and all slowly have breakfast. And this is discouraging me because I'm not getting these moments. And how I like to think about it is right now, you know, maybe you choose like the time when, you know, I get up in the morning for the first five minutes is my slow time right now. That eventually is going to widen the more you do that. And I think of like exercising, the more you you use that muscle, the longer and the more you're gonna be able to do it. So don't try to bite off like an entire morning or be like, oh, we're gonna start a slow morning routine. Great, yeah, start the slow morning routine, but really only focus on one very small part, even if it's like five to 10 seconds. You guys know here, I love small increments of things. I like these micro moments to really focus in on ourselves. And you know, for me as a mom, I'm constantly, you know, finding these little pockets of me time because I don't get lots and lots of time to do things like even record, like right now, you know? My kids are at my mother-in-law's on a really weird whim, you know? Like it's not like I get this, time to just be slow all the time and so it's finding these little pockets and also inviting your kids into that slow yeah so i think it's just finding these little moments these little little moments to yeah be able to slow our lives down and enjoy them the second thing i would do is find something to anchor yourself with in this case kombucha <laughs> Maybe it's tea, maybe it's coffee, maybe it's uh, when you go to lay down, you know, for bed at night. Maybe it's nap time, um, you know, that's kind of the trigger. It's these moments, these trigger moments that remind us to be slow. For me, I really love coffee, so I started out with taking my coffee when I had a new little baby and I had a toddler, so I had two under two. And I would just take my coffee for literally 30 seconds, even if somebody was screaming, and I would sit in my chair and be, and just allow my body to just be for those 30 seconds. Smell the coffee, look at the coffee, really bring those sensations in. Um, this is not something new if you've been around here for a while, but sometimes we need to remember that we have to start really small to widen the window and having something to anchor you, to remind you every single time you wanna do something is going to make something actually stick and to make something last longer. So try anchoring yourself with something. And I'm curious if you have 
something that you already are like, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna anchor myself in this way. Comment it below, because I think it helps people to see different ideas and different ways that they can start anchoring themselves and finding these little moments of slow. So I'm kind of in a weird spot right now, but I had like stopped to look at something and set my camera here. When I looked up, I was like, this is perfect. Forget aesthetic. <laughs> Forget aesthetic, forget what that looks like. Who gives a poop? Nobody. The only thing that matters is you, you know? That's why my definition of slow living is becoming more of you, learning what you like. What is your family's uh, season that they're in? Like, I have toddlers. We have bright colored things. I, I do like more neutral colored things, typically, but they have bright colored things that are in my living room and that's totally okay, you know? And it's okay that you live in a rental and your walls are this color. <laughs> like it is okay. It's okay to have a very normal life, to not have these beautifully airy rooms with perfect, you know, uh, furniture and all of the things. That is not slow living. That is just an aesthetic that is absolutely beautiful. And maybe it's even something that I want to work towards, right? But it's not something that is mandatory for starting slow living. And I think that when we can shed that and we can say, yeah, I have kids. Yeah, I wanna drastically decrease, you know, the amount of clutter in my home so I don't have so much I'm picking up. But the aesthetic isn't what's stopping me from slow living. Maybe the stuff, the amount of stuff I have is, because I'm constantly picking up and doing things throughout my house. But slow living has no aesthetic. Just throw that right out there. Okay, the next thing that I would do, set a timer. Um, this is my kid's timer, but sometimes I use it for myself. <laughs> It's nice because it shows you how much longer is left. I'll link this in my Amazon uh, store. But this has been huge in helping me to stick with being slow. This also helps me as somebody who wants to be productive and wants to get things done to tell myself that being slow is only gonna last as long as this timer. It keeps me from getting anxious. It gives me boundaries. It gives me a uh, kind of security and knowing that I'm not gonna go over the allotted time. Like surely right now I have 10 minutes to do slow time for myself. I have 10 minutes. So let me put that on my timer and let me stick to that. And this just, I don't know, there's safety in it. There was so much safety for me in knowing like I have 10 minutes to be slow right now. I don't have anything else I've got to do. I just need to be slow. Doing the timer has helped me tremendously in widening the window of how long I can tolerate being slow. So what do you actually do when you want to start slow living? This was something that str I struggled with big time. I was like, I'm gonna read a book and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And if we go back to, you know, holding your coffee cup, finding your anchor, you know, I mentioned you wanna look at the coffee, you wanna smell it, you wanna feel the cup. You wanna use your five senses. And so use this time to really get in tune with your senses, with your body, what's going on for you. And for me, I like playing the five senses game because it's kind of challenging for my brain to, to have to see and notice what's going on. But what this actually did is it helped me to understand what was going on within my body, the different red flags, the different sensations that were actually causing me things like mom rage. So I think that there is so much more benefit here than just like, oh yeah, I'm looking at my senses. Like, no, this is going to help you identify, you know, what does my body feel like when it's just calm? What does my body feel like when it's really tense? When my nervous system is on high alert, what does that feel like? And so I look at this as a really cool opportunity to be able to do that. And it only takes a minute or two. Again, I had two kids under two. And so if I could go back, I would actually integrate this into my day. I would take several moments throughout my day to, to check in, to be slow. This didn't mean I had to be slow for hours on end. I could be slow for a minute. And if my kids were behaving on the ground, <laughs> not doing anything, not getting into anything, which was rare, um, I could maybe take an extra minute, two, three, five minutes, and just 
be, you know, just, just be intentional. Watch my kids play, watch their movements. This is another great time to do that. Maybe your own senses, maybe it's something you've, you're doing already and you're like, oh, that doesn't really, um, you know, it doesn't trigger for me or doesn't, it doesn't translate for me. But maybe you could just sit and watch your kids. You could just observe. I mean, there is so much joy that I get from just sitting there, watching my kids play and interact and learn. And also, I notice like, oh, you're getting triggered right now. That is triggering for you. Like sometimes I just need to step away, step back and just observe and notice. And so slow, having these slow moments helps us to be able to be there for our kids, to be able to see what's going on in their world. Because so often we get into our own thing. You know, we're so focused in on our tasks and what is going on in our own life that we're just parenting at that point. You know, we're just like, don't do this, do that. You know, we're correcting and boundary setting and all the things. And so uh, let's just step back for a minute and let's just notice and let's just be. So the next thing I'm going to say very cautiously, (laughs) don't go off the deep end here, but, um, start a Pinterest board, get inspired, you know, look at other YouTube creators. Somebody I love is Madison Gray. She talks so much about slow, simple, minimalistic living. And it's such an inspiration to watch her videos and to see what she finds beautiful and the way that she is living slow. But what I have to be careful with when I start watching too much of this stuff is you know, comparing myself and and telling myself, well, I need to be there, but she's been slow living probably a little bit longer than I have. So of course she's gonna be further along. And you know, maybe she didn't have the same hiccups that I did and and the same, you know, life troubles. No, (laughs) you know, like I think that we all have our own journey and it's okay to be wherever we're at. And also knowing that there is more to slow living out there. Like, like you may not have ever thought to yourself, oh, I can do slow living, but only do it for a minute a day. That's so cool. You know, like maybe you thought slow living was an entire lifestyle that you had to stick to at all times. And that's why I named this channel Slowish Parenting. (laughs) Because it's just, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you're in a really busy season of life and you can do your best to, you know, pull that back and pull in the reins, but sometimes it's really difficult and that's okay. So I just wanna let you know that it's okay to dance here and to, to enjoy all the aspects of slow living and look into it and dream about it, but don't get stuck there. You wanna actually utilize that stuff to start your journey. The next thing, single tasking. So don't be doing 100 things and being productive, right? Try single tasking even if it's just one thing. You say, when I'm doing the dishes, I'm only doing the dishes. It's a hard one for me, (laughs) to be honest. For me, it started out with when I was doing cloth diapers, um, when I would rinse them out into the toilet, that was my time that I was single tasking. I was like, nope, not gonna be doing other things right now, not listening to podcasts and doing six other things. It's like literally just here doing the the diapers and that is it. So I encourage you to start single tasking and find something that doesn't take a long time. It's really simple to do, um, doesn't use a lot of brain power, but it helps you to slow down and to just really notice what you're doing, how you're doing it, and also allows your brain kind of a little rest from the rest of the day when you're trying to be productive and you're wearing many hats at one time. The next thing is lighting. Lighting is huge in my slow living journey. I actually started by lighting a candle at dinner. That was the very first thing I did to start introducing low dim lighting. And if you're kind of curious, where did this come from? Um, I read in the book of Huga, the Huga book, can't remember what it's actually titled. I think it's Huga Home, Um, but I'll link it below and I'll make sure to put it in my Amazon store. But I absolutely believe that the low dim lighting really helped to set the tone for calm. And now we pretty much only do a candle at night at dinner time um, and then we make sure to have low lighting and that's actually what I want to show you here but I have these little lights um, they're 
can't really tell here in the video, but it's pretty dim. Um, and then it has actually three settings. So if I really needed to, I could, you know, up it. But these are warm light bulbs. Um, and what that does is it helps our bodies to calm down. It helps them relax. It lets our body know that, like, we don't need to be stressed um, and that's what I feel like the fluorescent lights really do and again this is just what I read in that hookah book that really impacted the way I looked at light um, some people are like red light only I'm interested in doing salt lamps if you have done salt lamps I'm curious if you have a favorite link it below um, but I'm curious about salt lamps because I've heard so many people just enjoy them but I find myself gravitating towards things like candles warm dim lighting um, maybe even like a salt lamp or something like that. Um, something that helps our body to register and recognize that this is a moment to slow down. This is a moment that I get to be calm. And it also is a great um, indicator, I think is the word I'm looking for, an indicator for our kids to show them like, yeah, this is quiet time. This is a slow time. And especially before bed, this is a great routine to add in uh, because it invites our kids into, yeah, the night is ending. It's, it's getting to be bedtime and it helps their body adjust from, you know, the chaos of the day to, you know, stepping into a, a more calm slow bedtime uh, which can be really challenging especially when you have little kids so the, the light is a really good way to trigger their minds into okay we're, we're transitioning and here we go so my last tip is to actually start with dinner time a lot of people may be like oh I, I would like to start in the morning that'd be the first place to start it sounds like a great time to start if you don't have little kids <laughs> but for me mornings were really chaotic and really busy and my husband was trying to get out the door and it just it was too overwhelming and so I found that dinner times having slow beautiful dinners was a way to integrate slow first um, outside of those little micro moments that I was having and so I would light my candle um, I make these my, my beeswax candle this actually um, is from Teresa um, when she was actually the ruffled linen um, I forget what she's titled now but I will link her below as well she has a bunch of beautiful handmade pottery um, that's what she does. But anyhow, I find that if we can start with mealtime, it gives our hands something to do, right? It, it gives our eyes when we have, you know, low lighting, it, it helps our eyes to adjust and to make that transition, like I had mentioned earlier. But it also gives us connection. And when we have kind of this trifecta of, of um, feelings and responses and, um, What's the other word I'm looking for? Uh, really, when we're having this moment, these three things going on at the same time, it's a really good feeling. And so it's gonna make us wanna do it every single night again and again. And I can't tell you how many slow and beautiful evenings were born out of just lighting a candle. Like, that was all I did. That was my only intention. I was like, okay, we're gonna light the candle. The kids like magically wanted to sit around the dinner table. They would get down, you know, and they were all done and they would go dance. And my husband and I would just sit and watch them dance, you know, because they were just so happy just to have our attention, to have us being fully present. And you can't do that when you're not being slow. You just can't, it's really hard. So I hope that these tips helped you. I hope that just one of them have encouraged you that you can start slow living. I hope that you have this peace and this freedom to just do, to just do whatever slow living means to you and start in a place that feels good and feels right and I hope that you quiet the noise of all the aesthetics and, you know, try this thing and do this and do that and, you know, your whole life will be amazing. It's time, it's a process, and it's okay that it's a process. So if you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more content like this, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, happy parenting.